Hello, this is Darren. And this is Paige. And this is Where's, Where's the, the lemonade? lemonade? Where we talk about what happens when life throws you lemons. Make some lemonade? Uh, maybe. Some weeks it's lemon squares. Yeah, some weeks it's just lemons. Yep. <laughs> On today's episode... We're going to talk about how to tell your kids about your divorce or separation. Worst day ever. If the opening sounds a little gloom, because this is a pretty tough subject... It is doom and gloom. It is doom and gloom. And we had no idea how much it would be until we started working on this episode. Yeah, I mean, even when you and I were discussing it, because we thought, oh, this is going to be a really good episode, which I I think it is going to be a good episode. But even you and I, we had to kind of go to our own corners because it was getting, we weren't getting angry with each other. No, it was was just just, bringing back bad memories. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was. We were we were getting kind of irritable and not really towards each other, but just, yeah, it, it, it brings up a lot of sadness. It does. And at first, we were going to call this episode Divorce Dog, How to Navigate Your Kids Through um, the Separation. But we didn't get past talking and preparing for just talking to them about the separation. Yeah, so we decided that Divorce Dog is going to be a different episode. Exactly. And now, we did some research online and we also talked to our older kids oh that was hard too it was very interesting it was because everybody has a different perspective of that day and of what happened and of what was said depending on their age their maturity their you know what i mean like everyone had you know took something different away i mean we all took away the same thing our families have now been divided Yeah. yeah So I guess our first advice to everyone is don't get divorced. Don't do it. If there's any possible way to save it, save it. Any any shred of any inkling that you can stay together, stay. So that's our first advice. That's our first advice. Our second advice is there's no perfect way to do this. Um, The way that you did it is almost the complete opposite of the way that, that I handled it. They're so right. different. It, yep. It's amazing. And you'll, you guys will hear the contrast between the two. But the end result with our children when we talked to them was pretty much the same. They remember the day very well, which they always will, as we do too. Um, and it makes them very sad. It does. So let's first talk about uh, your, uh, your day that you told your kids about, uh, the separation. Mine was spur of the moment. Not it wasn't just, oh wow, my marriage is falling apart today, and you know it wasn't that. It had it, been building for years. It had been building for years, um, and something happened that day that kind of was the tip, right? That knocked everything over. The Jenga tower came crumbling down, and I went, I have to protect my family and my kids, and and. I've got to do what I got to do. So, yes, I I went to my husband at the time and said, you need to go. And he did not want to. He begged and pleaded and wanted to stay. And I said, nope, you know, we need you to go um, so you can work on yourself. And then hopefully we can, you know, resume being a family. And that was my hope. That was my hope. So, yeah, we, um, so it was for the moment. We told the kids that night. I think actually that afternoon, it was a, it was kind of spur of the moment. It was not planned in advance. It was spur of the moment. But it was, it had been a long time coming. Yes, very right. long time coming. And it wasn't divorce. You guys were just doing um, a pause, separation. Yes. Nothing formal, just. Nope. It was your dad's moving out um, to, you know, work on himself and hopefully, you know, he'll work on himself and be able to come back. That's kind of how we laid it out. Now, mine was very different than that. Right. Right. When um, my ex-wife and I sat down and talked to our kids, divorce papers had already been filed. And in the state of California, um, it takes six months after you file a divorce for it to be finalized. So we were already four months into this. Our kids had no idea because we were still living in the same house, sleeping in the same bed. Um, they had no clue. And when we talked to them, it was final. It was the divorce will be final in six weeks. 
Right. So a very different. Right. There was still hope on my end where your end it was, just, this is done. We slammed the door. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, really, really difficult. So let's talk about, you said that it was kind of spur of the moment, but it wasn't really spur of the moment because you and your ex talked about how are we going to tell the kids? Yes, we did. That day we talked about how we're going to tell the kids. Yes, we had not talked about it before then. Um, but yes, that day when I said, you got to go, um, we did. And so you sat down and talked to him about it and what you would say. How did that, how'd that go? Um, it was me talking and like I said, he, he didn't want to go. So it was, he was upset and, but I was just pretty adamant and, you said that your kids, you know, were blindsided. My kids were blindsided as well. They had no idea. No idea this was coming. We kept it from them. Um, all these years of, you know, turmoil that we've been going through, it had been kept from them. So, you know, I wanted yeah, to... Yeah, both of the, all of our kids, when we talked to them today, uh, said that, that they were all blindsided. Yes. And I don't know that there's any other way to do it. And my kids even said that when I talked to... Um, my two kids, um, you know, Rachel even said, I'm glad that I, I had a really happy, good childhood until that day. So if I would have let them in on our marriage problems 10 years earlier, you know, I don't know that that would have been the right thing to do. I don't know. So, you know, you brought up something interesting, which I think is a tip that we'll bring up again later, and that's don't involve your kids in your marital strife. Right. Yeah, keep the, keep it separate. Keep it separate, right. which is a good tip. For us, um, I knew this was coming for four months because my ex filed for the divorce. And um, so we actually did a lot of preparing. Talked to our marriage counselor that we had. How are we going to talk to the kids? You know, planned it all out. So for me, because I'm a planner anyway, I had a plan. Everything was planned out. I got as much advice as I could on how do we talk to the kids about this. We even role played, um, which ended up with me mostly talking. Yeah. So I think that was similar for both of our situations. You did the talking. Um, and you did the talking. And I did the talking. And yeah. So so very different. The outcomes, it turns out, were were different as well. Well, no, they're pretty much the same, but... Mine was more totality, and yours was, we're going to work on this. Right, which my kids said was confusing, right? Because they didn't know, are mom and dad going to get back together? Are they not? Are they, you know, it was confusing. And we still had, you know, dad came over for Thanksgiving and Christmas, and, you know, during this separation, he, when I started working, he would come over and watch Sam while I was at work, and so he was at the house a lot. They he didn't have a place. He was just staying at a friend's or whatever. So he didn't have a, a place for the kids to come. So he always came to our house. Right. And for for me, it was just the opposite. I had bought a house um, close to where uh, we were renting before. Down the street. So, down the street. Seven houses. Seven houses down. That's right. <laughs> Mostly so the kids could see and. To, to me, I planned everything out, so everything was set up. So when this horrible day happened, I was trying to show the kids that there's some stability. Dad's right down the street. He has a, a house, right? The kids have a place to stay. Right. And mom's still renting. The kids have a place to stay right. close by. Right. So that's that's one of the other differences. Our um, Mine was totality and also... Um, Everything logistically was all taken care of. Right. Um, emotionally, that's a whole nother story. Right. So, yeah. And with me, I sat down with Jake and Rachel. They were... I now, why think, didn't you have all the kids? So, Amanda was at college and Sam was four. And I thought that that was too young to bring him into what we were going to talk to the other kids about. So we put him, uh, I think he was taking a nap and we talked to Rachel and Jake, which I think they were 16 and 13, something like that. 
or maybe even older, 14 and 17. 14 and 17. Yeah, something like that. 14 and 17. I think that's right. Um, so, yeah, so we talked to them, the two of them, and then uh, called Amanda later that evening. Um, but they, when I talked to them today, I asked them what we could have done differently. And, you know, when we ask our kids this question, we genuinely are looking for honesty because um, we want to be able to be helpful in this podcast. And because we, we can't go back and change anything, I, you know. No, we can't. But we maybe can't. we can help other couples that are going through this really tough time. Right. So Rachel said... It, maybe it would have been better for, um, I did all the talking and my ex did not. And they said it might've been better. Her and Jake said that it might've been better if my ex would have done some talking. Yeah. So it was more unified. Right. It was this, they came out of this conversation that we had. Mom is kicking dad out of the house. And so they were angry with me. Yeah. And that, was true i was asking him to leave but they didn't understand the entirety of the situation and what was going on now you guys also talked a little bit about what was going on about why we were getting about why well you separated separate yes yes we did not say divorce that day no um where with with me and my kids it was your mom and i are getting a divorce and we're not telling you why right right you had talked about that with your your um, therapist, yeah, your yeah. counselor and your ex, and you guys had decided not to tell them that day. Right. Yeah. That's correct. Now, for, for me, it was a little bit different. We had Matthew off at college, and then we had the five younger kids at home, the youngest being David, who was about four when it happened. Three. It was three or four? Yeah, yeah. Four? So oh, no, I guess he, he was four. four. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he was four. just turned yep. four. You're right. Um, and I actually flew Matthew out from college um, to come to uh, be with the family. My whole idea was that the whole family should be together for this um, horrible moment. Yeah. Um, so mine was a little bit different because it was the end of the family as right. we knew it. Yes. Yours was, we're on a pause to try and save the family. Right, exactly. And mine had already reached that, that point. Right. So a little bit different. And the kids said the same thing. Um, They wished that it was more of a unified front with my ex and myself. I did most of the talking. Right. Um, So that, you know, and the situation as it is, you can't really change it. But that's another good tip. And that is that you and your soon-to-be ex need to be unified and talking to the kids together when this happens. Yeah, that is what Jake said. He said, one of the things I think you did right was that you and dad together sat down with us, even though he didn't do much of the talking. Um, he said, I think that that's important for both parents to be there, no matter what the situation might be. If you can try and come together for that moment to tell your kids this news, I think that's for the best. Right. Now, is there anything that you guys did to prepare the kids at all before this happened? No. I guess not because it was spur of the moment. But it really wasn't spur of the moment, though, was it? You kind of knew things were Well, things have been falling apart for 10 years, literally. But I I never really thought I was going to have to get to the point where we were going to have to separate. You know, I, ne- I didn't want that to happen. So I never really thought that all the way through until that day, literally. Wow. Yeah. And then it was like, nope, I, I've got to... I got to protect my family. Yeah. So for me, it was protecting my family as well, but the the marriage was already over. Right. The paperwork had already been filed. So I actually had four, well, six months to prepare um, for what we, what we had to tell the kids. Right. So I went into preparing mode, right? I got my kids to see uh, counselors or to have someone to talk to even before we, we um, had the divorce. Uh, but, or before we told the kids about the divorce, I had them meeting with a counselor to just talk about the changes that, because we just moved to Folsom. So I made up some lame excuse so that at least they had uh, someone to talk to about. Um, I bought a house. I, you know, flew Matthew out. It was very different. Um, and 
um, Jacob, my son Jacob, um, actually said something about that. Do you remember? About being so prepared. Oh, no. What did he say? Oh, it, it was, I hope I get this right, Jacob. After we talked to the kids that, you know, hey, your mom and I are, are getting a divorce. We're no longer living together. And I bought a house down the street. Oh, gotcha. And here's the new schedule and here are the logistics. and Everything was laid out. Everything was laid out. Um, and I told them all right then and there. And they said that was a little bit overwhelming for them. Right. And here you thought that you were doing the right thing by saying, don't worry, kids, everything is taken care of. Everything's going to be taken care of. Everything's safe. Right. Right. There's Yeah. It's all planned out. It's all good. But it was just so much for them to process. It was. And he said it was a little much. He said it would have been better if that came a couple days or a week later. Right. um, Where they would have um, seen that. I can see that. I can see that. But it is important also to have um, logistics all figured out before you make this announcement. True. Because if you don't, and then the kids see no change, then they don't understand. They become very confused. Right. So one of the things that Rachel said that we did right was she liked how after we were done talking to them, I said, if you guys want to go have some alone time, we had a basement and her and Jake went downstairs. Actually, I think Jake went outside on the property and took off. And Rachel went downstairs. She said she took a shower and cried and then went to her room. And she had time to process. So we didn't, you know, make this. What's wrong? Are you okay? Right, blah, right. Blah, blah, blah. Which yeah. she, did, she said, I did ask, do you have any questions about 25 times? But I let them have their space. And then she said several hours later, I came down and said, Do you have any questions? And so she and Jake said the same thing that he felt like that time that we gave them to go be alone with their thoughts was was good. Well, and we did the same thing. Um, My ex and I actually left the kids, all six of them alone, and we we left um, so that they had time to process and talk together as siblings. Right. Um, And they they said that was an important time that they had to process things and every single one of my kids took it completely different yeah i mean dallin he said he can't remember anything except the words you uh your mom and i are getting a divorce and he goes after that i plugged my ears and i didn't want to hear anything else out of your mouth yeah so and it's hard um for your kids This will destroy their lives. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Um, My kids remember the day and the hour that happened. What a horrible thing to do to your children. Help. Um, And I'm sorry to put it that bluntly and bold, but your kids may have a really hard time forgiving you for some time. Yeah. Now you say it destroyed their lives, and it did. And that's when we have to work on helping them put it back together. Exactly. And because we made this mess for them. And we have to help them put it back together. Right. And that's the next tip. When you tell the kids, you need to keep all your emotions out of it. This is not about you. It's about your kids. Right. You, they're going to be in an emotional roller coaster and you can't be. You've got to be calm. You cannot inject any of your high emotional state that you're going to be in anyway. You've got to plan ahead. You've got to figure this out um, so that you can be calm and collected and help them get through this horrible thing that you are imposing on them. Yes, I totally agree. I totally agree. This is a really heavy podcast. There's not much laughter in this one, huh, babe? No, not a lot of laughter. And you know what I want to say to our listeners? If you know of someone... that's going to go through this horrible thing. I hope you will have them listen to this podcast. And maybe if we can just help one family try and navigate through this horrible thing that they are going to do, then it will be worth it, right? That we're sitting here reliving the worst day of our lives. Hopefully it'll be worth it.
All right, so now let's talk about after we got some Kleenex. <laughs> this is definitely a not bit. a giggly episode. No, it's not. Let's talk about what you do after you tell the kids. We did hint it on, on some of those things with our own experiences. Um, so let's talk about um, what, what to expect after you tell the kids. First thing we said was give them some time to process. Absolutely. Give them some time to think, to process, maybe call their friends. You know what I mean? Like each kid is going to maybe handle it differently. Talk to each other. Um, make a dartboard with your face on it. No, they I won't mean, go that far. It, 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 but you know what I mean? You need you, to give them space to do what they do. need to do. They do. But your kids still need to show you some kind of respect. So it's a fine line. You, your kids do need a voice. They're going to be angry with you. They're going to be very upset. Um, they need to be heard. Right. Um, but also make sure that they're not completely disrespectful f- for you. You are not, if, if you take that, you can easily say, let's say that um, my kids were saying something bad about their mom after that moment or bad about me. Either spouse should step up and say, wait just a second. I know you're upset, but this is a, a joint thing. We're doing this together. That way you're showing you, uh, unity and you're not throwing your ex under the bus. Which is hard. Oh, yeah. Because it's not always... W- Copacetic. Your, no. Well, it's not It's not always a unified thing because, I mean, I didn't want to get divorced. You didn't want to get divorced. No. So it's really, really hard when you feel like, I didn't want this. But when you're telling... We're telling you... When you're telling your kids, it's good for you both to, in that moment, be calm and talk to them together. Absolutely. Um, The next thing you have to do is make sure that the kids see a difference. So if, let's say that you did talk to the kids about separation, and then the next day, mom and dad are at breakfast, that's a little confusing to the kids. Right. I agree. So they don't, they won't understand, especially your younger kids. They won't understand what separation then means. Right. So there has to be a plan on what you're doing day two. Right. um, Right. After things happen. Now, something you did after you told your kids, um, which Jacob said, I don't know if that was right. Actually, Dallin said that too. You brought them down the street to see the new house that they were going to be living in. Yeah, and each one of their new rooms. Right. And you and your ex thought that you were doing the right thing by saying, oh, and here's dad. Because you said even your ex came with yeah, you. Yeah. yeah. So it was like, here's dad's new house. This is where you're going to be. You thought this was, once again, a stability thing. Like, don't worry. Everything's, your room's all set. Everything's ready to go. But they said that that was it's too much. It's a little overwhelming. It was too much. They said. Yeah. Now, you do have to show them. So instead of being that overwhelming, what I probably could have changed was we would have talked about logistics for example, you guys will be at your mom's until Wednesday, and then you'll come over to um, your your dad's, which is right down the street. And on Wednesday, you'll get to see right. your dad's house right. at that time. Yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a little overwhelming. Me trying to fix everything all the time. Right. And that's why we said we're, we can't go back and change any of these things. And luckily... We have very forgiving children. We do. We are so blessed because our kids have... It has been eight years. It's been eight years, but they have done a good job. Yep, they have. At forgiving us. Yep, they have. Um, And loving us. (laughs) (laughs) Regardless whether we're crybabies or not. Yes. Um, The next thing to do is to set up a routine as soon as possible uh, so that the kids have a normalcy that they can see. Even though their life's destroyed, they still need some structure, uh, something that they can rely on that um, is solid. Um, And this is probably one of the hardest things. Don't be doomy and gloomy all the time. You got to find some fun. That's really hard. And that's even hard for me. And I'm the fun master. I want to go have fun. But it's hard when you feel like your, I mean, your world has imploded. Yeah, you feel like curling up in a ball yeah. and laying in bed you in do. the dark. You do, and you've got these kids to take care of, and uh, it's it's such a hard, rough time. 
And that's the time that your kids are going to need you the most is, yep. is that first part after the separation. Right. Their world's been rocked. You cannot go into your own little shell and be selfish. Right. Uh, this is the time when you need to step up and show them the best that you can, um, stability, calmness, and routine. And yes, go do some fun things with them. Remember that you can still go have fun. We can let loose and, you know, go get an ice cream, go for a swim, be together and do some fun things. Right. Um, The other advice we give is don't get a dog. We'll talk about that in our next episode, (laughs) the divorce dog episode. The one thing my mom gave me some great advice, and I think you recognize it when we actually got married, it was have dinner together. Sit down with your kids. Oh, with your kids. And okay. have dinner together on real plates, not paper plates. There's a temptation, especially if, if you only have the kids for like two or three hours on a Wednesday night, which was the case when um, I first got separated or divorced. Um, I only had the kids on Wednesday night. The temptation was, all right, it's chicken nuggets on paper plates again tonight. Um, my mom instilled in me that, Make sure you set the table. Make sure that the kids show that stability, that continuity. That this is home. This is home, not just a temporary spot. Right. This is home. And I, I, I'm happy she told you that. <laughs> At the same time, Joanne. <laughs> but I remember when I married you. And I mean, I, I like to do plates, you know, most of the time. I'm yeah. Real plates most of the time. But occasionally I'm like, you know what? Hey, let's just do paper plates. And I remember in the beginning of our marriage, you were like, well, no. And I was like, what is his deal with paper plates? That was the reason why. Yes. I and wanted we, to make sure the kids yes. felt like this was a permanent and spot. You know what? That was no big deal. We we rarely, in fact, the only time we do paper plates now is if the dishwasher is full <laughs> and we didn't run it. That's, that's right. when we do that's paper when plates. That's we do paper plates. <laughs> All right, so let's hit some um, quick tips on how to go through this whole thing. Um, first off, our first tip is don't get divorced in the first place. Do everything <laughs> you can. Get a good marriage counselor. Do everything you can to not get divorced. Yep, first tip, don't get divorced. Yeah, that's second. second. If you do, yep. <laughs> it's remember, it's about the children, not you. When you sit down and talk with them, it's not about you. Keep your feelings and emotions to yourself and don't inject anxiety into the situation. Yep. Be calm. Talk to the kids. And if you have to role play this ahead of time, role play it, plan it out. Um, do your best to keep the emotions out of it. Yep. Another tip is um, what is your plan for the next day? You've got to have that. What's going to happen the very next day? And you need to tell the kids what's going to happen the very next day. You don't have to dump on them what's going to happen the next month or the next year. (laughs) Like I did. Yeah. Right. But you can say, you know what, tomorrow this is what's going to happen. Or even say, like, I think, you know, on Wednesday you're going to come down to my house. So try and give them a little little bit of an idea of what's going to happen. They're going to be confused on what's the future look like. Right. So they want to know immediate future, what's going to happen tomorrow. Right. Right. So. Yep. What's the next one, babe? Um, Oh, it's a question. Are you still living in the same house? We just read an article where this couple separated and divorced and living in the same house together. Then why did they bother to get divorced? Very confusing to the kids in a lot of respects. There may be some time where you are living in the same house because maybe you can't afford a separate house. Yes. But you've got to make it clear to the kids what's going on. It could be very confusing for them. So try and be clear about the situation, not be... I mean, I, I remember talking to Rachel today and I said, was it confusing when your dad came back and had Thanksgiving with us? And she said, yes, but the whole thing is confusing. I mean, their 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 heads are just spinning. So, so try and decrease as much uh, yes. confusion as you can. Yes. By being clear. That doesn't mean spilling and, and confessing to everything that's gone on in your marriage to your kids. No. That's not appropriate. No. Adult conversations are for adults, not for children. Right. Right. So keep that in mind as well. Also, make sure that you've planned out the logistics on what's going on, who's paying for what. If you don't have a formal agreement, which you guys didn't, but we did because it, the paperwork had already been filed. Right, right. We, he, yeah, um, my ex and I, we just had a verbal agreement when he left of what he would still pay for him. 
it was just a verbal thing at the time. It was just verbal. Mm -hmm. And don't get caught up on trying to be perfect on this. That'd be another tip that we have because there's no perfect way to tell your kids that their family is destroyed. Right. And that is what, when I asked Jake today, what we could do differently to help someone else. And he said, there's no magical way to do this. It's, he said, it's just going to suck. That's what he said. And it is. It is. And as much as I hate that word, in fact, my kids are going to be so surprised that I just said that. But that only because it was a quote from Jake. Jake made me say it. <laughs> sure. Blame Jake. That's right. Okay. So another tip is, should you tell the kids why you got divorced? Yeah. So this is where you and I differed. Yep. Because I did. We told you them did. why we were separating. Um, um, and I didn't. And it was kind of an agreement that my ex and I had. Um that we work through because we probably spent three or four sessions with a marriage counselor and talking about how are we going to talk to the kids about the divorce? Right. And are we going to tell them? And we kept going back and forth. The most important thing is, is that we both um, agreed in the end not to tell them specifics, just to say that, you know, the divorce is happening. Right. Now, yeah. the kids actually asked why, and we said, we're not going to tell you at this time. Right. So, so where in my situation, we did tell them. In fact, Rachel says that I may have used the wrong wording. I started off by saying that their dad was sick. And so she immediately thought with cancer or something. So be careful of your wording. I didn't, you know, he wasn't ill that way. He had a problem. He had an addiction. So, you know, you have to be careful of your wording. (laughs) So you don't scare them. And I would also say you're, when you talk to your kids, It's not a half hour conversation. You don't need to over talk to them. Right. Or try and convince them that this is the best thing. Right. You'll never convince them in the moment. So just get the facts out and then let them kind of have their time to, to sit with it and then come back later and say, do you have any questions? Yes. I think that's the best way to go. I love you. I love you too. And Um, I love, I love our kids. I love our kids, too. I don't know how much I love our listeners for giving us the suggestion to do this episode. This, but was, this was definitely the hardest one so far. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Our Lemonade Moment of the Week has to do with Paige turning 50. Why did you just say that? Well, because you said... We had to talk about how old we're getting and we have to stay active. Oh my gosh, I didn't mean for you to tell everybody that I was 50. I th- I'm, well, not yet. Yes, next week, oh, Paige turns 50. I can't believe 50. you just announced that. Anyhow, we uh, went on a hike to Hidden Falls, which if you live in the, Calif- in the Sacramento, area. Sacramento area, you need to check out this hike. It is fun. We do it every year. Yep, we climb the falls. Um, wait, hold on. Wait, I take the pictures. I take the pictures. I did it last year. No, no, sir. Yes, I did. You have never climbed those falls. Yes, I have. Not one time. Yes, I have. You did not. Yes, I did. No, you have not. You've always been the one up, up in the wall, overlook, taking pictures. Last year, I climbed the falls with you guys. See, he's getting so old. He is now rewriting history. I want. Oh, are you I want you. Pictures out? <laughs> you guys will see the pictures from last year where I climbed the falls. He didn't climb the falls. But what I wanted to say was how important it is um, that you do fun, active things with your kids. Get out there and go do something fun, active. I mean, we were getting scratched up because there's blackberry, blackberry bushes, bushes everywhere. We're scratched. We're you know, eating the berries as we go along. But the kids were having so much fun. And there's all these different little pools. They have, they call them, the, you know, there's an Adam and Eve pool over here. And Don't then we get climbed, started. Yeah, we climbed up the waterfall. And anyway, that's our lemonade. Do something fun. Go do something fun and active. Wait, stop the bumper music. Paige has something to say. He climbed the falls last year. One time. You climbed the falls one time. That's but he did. He climbed the falls one time. Check out our evidence on <laughs> where's the lemonade.com. Brand I'm so, new website. I'm check sorry, it out. sweetie. You did climb the falls. Good job. Thank you, honey. <laughs> Thank you.
If you like today's episode, give us five stars on iTunes, Spotify, Google, and head to Facebook and like us. And check out our blog at wheresthelemonade.org, where you can leave questions and comments. And, but most of all, go out and make some lemonade. You betcha, baby. Next week's episode is on Divorce Dog again. And Disneyland. And skydiving. Yep, that's it. <laughs> <laughs>